Welcome to Donor Connect. My name is Lynn Yance, and I'm the Chief Charitable Giving Officer at the Community Foundation of Greater Des Moines. We're so glad you've joined us this afternoon. Today, our Donor Connect session and all of our Donor Connect sessions are really to lift up the part of our mission of connecting donors to causes they care about. And highlighted today, we are going to be hearing from some of the grant recipients that are made possible through our Community Foundation's Better Together Fund. To lead us in that conversation and discussion today is our Chief Community Impact Officer, Angie Detlifts Trenton. With that, I'll let you take it away, Angie. Great, thanks so much, Lynn, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm so excited to spend some time with each of you today, highlighting the work of the Better Together Fund as part of our Grantee Spotlight Series. So yesterday, we had an opportunity to hear from two recipients of grants in 2022. And today we have a chance to hear three more wonderful examples of impact throughout Greater Des Moines. Uh, yesterday we heard from Wesley Life's Meals on Wheels program and DART's uh, pilot project that they launched in the 50314 neighborhood. So for those of you who weren't able to join us for that, I'd certainly invite you to listen to that session. Uh, and for those of you who were there, welcome back today too. We're glad to have you here. All the three grants that we're planning to highlight today were made possible uh, thanks to support uh, from the Better Together Fund. And I just want to um, share a little bit about what the Better Together Fund's all about. Uh, I often reflect on the fund as being our community savings account, uh, growing over time through thoughtful contributions and investments. Um, and making sure that uh, funding is available no matter what our community might be facing. After all, we cannot predict the future uh, and we can't anticipate all of the time what needs will arise or what challenges we might be called to address. But we are always thankful knowing that donors who support the Better Together Fund are ensuring that our community can be ready with grant support to help bring projects to life. That Better Together Fund is overseen by our grant making committee. And we are very fortunate to have not only board members of the community foundation, but also other uh, members of our community involved in assessing community needs, opportunities, and making those grants um, throughout the community. So on behalf of the community foundation, thank you. Thank you to the donors, the Better Together Fund, those who are um, planning to leave legacy gifts after their lifetime to support our wonderful community through that particular fund. Um, I personally think that uh, the Better Together Fund really is a way to highlight community at its best. So thank you so much. Last year, 2022, we were incredibly fortunate to be able to uh, invest and partner uh, in supporting grants for five incredible organizations. Uh, today, we're going to highlight three of those, as I mentioned. Um, we'll be welcoming to the screen here in just a moment, uh, Toby O'Berry, who's with Iowa Homeless Youth Centers. Uh, we're also excited to have Ben Page with the Des Moines Parks and Recreation Department, and also uh, Marcus Ashworth with the Center at Six. So you're in for a treat hearing from these three innovative and really um, wonderfully uh, community-minded individuals. So I would first um, thought we'd take a couple of moments and just give you some background on each one of these three projects. So we're going to do those in order for just a couple of moments, and then we will all come back on screen and have a, a conversation about the impact and potential for Greater Des Moines. So first, I'm going to invite Toby O'Berry to um, join me here on screen, and uh, Barb is going to share uh, an image for you as we welcome Toby. Toby, thanks so much for being here, and uh, share a little bit about this exciting project, um, one of many that uh, Iowa Homeless Youth Centers is, has been involved with throughout Greater Des Moines. Sure. Thanks, Angie. Thanks for the time to come share a little bit about our agency and, and the work we're doing in the community. Um, I'm excited to hear about uh, Ben's project and Mark's project. Uh, we have a lot of great things that we're doing here in the community. Um, this project, Sixth Avenue Flats, uh, really came about from listening uh, to the needs of our clients, of the youth that we serve, and trying to understand uh, the importance that they place on safe, affordable housing, uh, but also having supportive services um, in place in their community, in their neighborhood that can help them get back on their feet. Um, and so what's innovative and unique about this project is we partnered with Jack Hatch and Michael Kiernan, um, secured uh, funding in the community um, to bring about 40 
uh, affordable housing units um, in the Riverbend neighborhood, which is exactly where we wanted to be. It's an amazingly strong community and neighborhood and just needed a little more investment uh, back into that, that neighborhood. So we're very happy and excited to be in the Riverbend neighborhood. Um, but kind of that innovative piece that um, we incorporated is including mental wellness services, uh, therapy and counseling outpatient services embedded into this affordable housing project in a neighborhood where um, individuals can live in this uh, apartment, wake up, um, walk to DMAC, go to school, go to the grocery store, come home, access their therapist um, here in the building um, and kind of live in a fantastic neighborhood and community. So it's really that one-stop shop of wraparound supportive services in an affordable housing project, which honestly has never been done to this level and this scale of partnering uh, mental wellness with affordable housing in that same footprint in that same project. Um, and we're very excited. Um, we're gonna be serving over 2000 um, individuals in the community uh, who are able to receive mental health services. Um, that were not available uh, before this project opened. I, I love that and appreciate you underscoring the potential of impact, not just for the individuals living in this particular, and it's a beautiful building, uh, was able to be there for the, the ribbon cutting. It's just a wonderful um, asset to the neighborhood and to the community. But I really appreciate what you were talking about, Toby, in terms of the mental wellness and the connectivity and bringing that um, place-based approach to, to services. So thanks for that overview, um, wonderful picture. Hopefully you'll, you will uh, be able to drive by it on Sixth Avenue, it's, it's a beautiful space. So let's turn now to Ben Page with Des Moines Parks and Recreation Department. And I'll invite Ben to talk about the exciting project that they've been working on and have made some wonderful recent announcements. So Ben, take it away. Well, thank you for allowing the city to be a part of today's webinar and these three projects, I think, will have one theme. It's, it's a, the intentionality to lift up a part of our community that has traditionally not had the same level of investment in it. And so we're proud today to kick off the city's version of our greatest project in this part of the community. It's the uh, Northside Community Recreation Center that had some very exciting news this last week where we had a namesake donor, the Reichardt family, come to us and help us kick off our fundraising to get us to the point where we can have a successful project now. Uh, this new facility will be vibrant, it'll be energy efficient, and it will be inclusive. Those three words are our themes throughout our project. And we wanted to make sure that as we build a new building, you have to reflect on what was there before. Today, a building that opened in the late 1800s, most people either refer to one of two of its life experiences as either the, uh, the Dowling High School original location, or today it's called the Community Grub YMCA. And that service still continues and the YMCA has done wonderful programming there. Our goal is to not only continue that wonderful programming, all those services, but to make sure it's just not a recreation center, it's a community recreation center because we do more than recreate there. We bring the community together for all types of services, all types of assistance, and just to have a safe place to come and recreate. I, I love those words, Ben. I wrote down um, that you've been focused on from the very beginning. Uh, vibrancy and inclusivity. And uh, I definitely have heard that, you know, loud and clear in all the conversations the Community Foundation has been a part of learning about this project um, and learning about the vast amount of community engagement that went into creating this. So I know we're going to talk a little bit more about all of the statistics that you have on here in terms of engagement and, and what it means to you and to the city and to this neighborhood um, here in just a moment. But I'm going to ask Marcus to join us and give an overview of his project and then we'll dive in. Marcus, thanks so much again for, for joining us. Would love for you to give an overview at uh, about the Center at Six project. And here I think is the most recent visual as of last night, if I remember correctly. Yes, this is fresh off of the press. So <laughs> a bit of an exclusive. So thank you for inviting me to be able to share this time and speak about Center at Six. Um, so for those that aren't familiar, Center Street um, from 1945 to 1970 was a thriving black community in the heart of Des Moines, which was actually displaced and destroyed by the creation of the freeway. And so Center at Six kind of um, seeks to carry forward that legacy by creating a space of community and, um, you know, ethnically diverse neighborhood that can bring local businesses together. So the incubator at Center at Six um, is going to be a bodega style cultural um cultural, colorful and character retail 
restaurant development space that's going to be specifically designed to meet the unique needs of the black and brown community um, with, throughout our um, entrepreneurial and innovator uh, space. And so the incubator at Center at Six will offer a flexible design where new businesses um, can learn and test their market products before they go mainstream. So you can come in and get access to those, um, talk to a, another entrepreneur like yourself or talk to that accounting expert, talk to that rep from your local buyer from a high V fairway, a come and go, whatever the case may be, and learn how to upsell your product. And not only that, but there's the affordable housing component that'll allow you to not only um, live, but work. And so and we, we'll roll more of that out in the future. But the premise behind putting anchored black businesses, black and brown businesses around other businesses that need incubations to create that sense of community that just doesn't exist anywhere in the nation um, is just something that we're really excited about. So we break ground March 14th as well. So. Boy, that is right around the corner. That, is, I, that makes me so excited. And I love how in every conversation, uh, again, Marcus, that we've been able to have with you, the, the focus on community and um, opportunity just is embedded in every single element of sort of the vision and the planning for Center at Six. So um, love, love what you're doing to really connect established, amazing black and brown business owners with those entrepreneurs who are the next amazing black and brown business owners that our community is so anxious for. So um, thank you for this. And thanks for sharing the hot off the press image. I love it. <laughs> Um, quite back, uh, ben and um, Toby to join Marcus and myself and we're going to try and have as much of a conversation as possible on a webinar here. Um, but I, I reflected on each of your projects, but, you know, I think the thing that I love about what the Better Together Fund has done in our investments in 2022 is find opportunities to support more than just one project, but to support innovative leadership. To, su to support new ideas that might, you know, inspire collective action in different ways. You know, it's more than just one thing. It's about what, what that project's going to do to this community and to our community's collective goals. Um, and I love that you, these three examples really are rooted in community, like basically the same community of the same neighborhood. And um, Ben, you described about, you know, really investing in the Sixth Avenue, Riverbend um, kind of community as well. So, you know, it's all of your projects have authentically engaged the voices to to bring these to bring these concepts to life. And I um, I really I really love that and really appreciate your intentional work of your organization to do that. Uh, Toby, just one of the things that you mentioned, and I don't want to lose it for the audience today, is the potential of this wellness concept being embedded in a, an affordable housing um, kind of effort. And you mentioned it's really kind of the innovative one um, that you know of. What is most promising to you about the potential model that you're creating? I don't know if you'd call it a model, but what, what's, what's most powerful to you right now as we think about how this really is, is more than Iowa Homeless Youth Center um, concept? I think I'm just really hopeful that um, when other developers uh, look at um, applying for IFA's affordable housing, low-income housing tax credits, um, kind of the, the historical element had been like, what's the minimum I need to do from a supportive service standpoint to get awarded the points to, to build this project? And we really took that approach as how much services can we fit into this footprint for the community? Um, and still pay for the cost of construction. And I think the, there's an opportunity for IFA and other federal funders to really lift up and value mental health services um, as a supportive service criteria or component to affordable housing projects, um, because really it's a, it's a huge need in the community. It's uh, cost effective to have one or two therapists in this footprint versus trying to build a new separate standalone building. Um, and so it just makes sense financially, um, and it makes sense from a kind of Iowa perspective, but also a national perspective. Um, when you're looking at affordable housing projects, uh, you should be looking at mental health services um, as an amenity for the community and, and for the, the tenants as a whole. Mm -hmm. Well, and one of the things, too, um, for those who aren't as familiar with Iowa Homeless Youth Centers, 
Uh, you also have a real intentional approach of engaging youth voice, and you took a lot of the lead on supporting um, some of our community's work around uh, some federal funds that came in to support youth homelessness. And so you know, my sense from you, Toby, is that what you've been able to create was because of what you genuinely heard from those that you're serving. Um, how important is that to sort of the work that you do every day, hearing their yeah. voice? It's definitely critical. Um, one, you want to be able to provide the avenue for that voice. And two, it's their life and perspective, and they know what's best uh, for the, to meet their own needs. Um, so it's really, as the nonprofit, you need to be that support um, service for the individuals that are walking that uh, path. And we have a youth action council that meets uh, every couple of weeks. Um, and we review all of IHYC's programs and we get feedback on how can we better serve you as the, the client. And um, it's really empowering for them, but it's even more valuable for our agency and our staff to listen to how best we can support uh, individuals in need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that thread, I and mean, even looking, Marcus, at you and some of the work that you were doing in terms of creating the incubator concept, the nonprofit incubator concept. And, and Ben, I know we've had so much conversation around how voice even changed some of the initial ideas for um, the, the um, community recreation center. I mean, am I right? I mean, the city had one thought and then you really also engaged in authentic conversation and, and now we have something new. So what, what reflection might you offer on sort of how your project has um, evolved based on all of that extensive feedback? We learned a long time ago that we have the right staff, we have professional staff that can design just about anything from a road to a park, but when we do without the community, it's not as used, it's not as beloved, and there's not that passion behind it to keep it up nice. So our process is always like most other cities, one or two public meetings, but we knew that wouldn't work here, right? Is why could we, why would we want to only have two meetings to design the building that's going to last another hundred years and only get just a little bit of comment? And so what we did was purposeful. We went out and we canvassed the neighborhoods. We put signs on doors. We did postcards. We went to the faith-based communities. Everywhere they would listen, even a local radio station to get the word out. And we saw great great passionate participation more than we've ever seen in any one project and it came up with so many new ideas and just one example that was not many rec centers that i've seen have uh incubator space in them kind of like the the, the uh, at six project here is they wanted a spot where they could go and maybe incubate that next nonprofit or that service that they need in their community right there in that neighborhood so we've listened we've engaged the only thing that we, we saw that we had to make a, a little bit of a slight shift to get was our public processes and government truly only really market themselves mostly to adults and retirees. So we weren't seeing the youth show up. This is a youth space as well as it is an adult space. So we had to have some pizza parties and had to get some cookies and punch and all that good stuff. And that brought the kids in. And now we have what everybody is unanimously saying is the best project we can get through, again, that intentional, slow, but deliberate public input process. Well, and, and then I know we had talked about this, but even the, the price tag and the, and the square footage of what what the what the city has committed to doing because of that feedback. And I think some of it is reflective of what Toby described, which is how can you get, you know, as much in that space to make it the most effective and efficient and supportive environment. And I think if I'm not mistaken, then the project went from maybe 12 million to 18 million because the community said, no, we need this stuff in here. <laughs> That's, that's you know, like all cities like us, we have limited funds, but we always have more projects than the funds are in the accounts. So we listen. And that's one thing we want to do is not just deliver, but over deliver. And that's why the Community Foundation has played such a role. They're helping us take a project that's good to making it great, right? By partnering together with all the great donors and individuals the Community Foundation has. Well, I'm excited and grateful that, um, that the city's had so much intention with community and neighborhood engagement. Um, because I think as all three of these projects really um, showcase is that there's not only so much history, there's so much potential in, in the individuals who make this place home and this neighborhood home in our community. And I'm excited about that. Um, you know, when I think about Marcus and, and your project, you know, I'm, things are probably coming a little full circle for you. I, I remember you and I had an opportunity to stand on, a, on the empty lot where Center at Six um, will be, where ground will be broken in just a few short weeks. And I remember you sharing with me, and it kind of gives me goosebumps even when I think about it, but you shared with me that you had a vision for this concept. 
and you knew that it would happen somewhere. And I think there was a particular day where it hit you. It should be in my neighborhood. Um, and, and I think sort of that visionary leadership um, is what this community is all about and what makes our community um, really such a powerful place for potential. Um, share a little bit more about what, you know, how you see this nonprofit incubator for black and brown businesses, um, what, what it will mean to Greater Des Moines, but what it will mean to the neighborhood. I'm curious from your perspective, because you've been so thoughtful about it. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where at first even just, um, you have to understand even connecting the legacy of Center Street to this, you're, there's there's a generational pride uh, of seeing something like this, of this magnitude come back to this community and for it to be focused on the community. Um, and that's, that's one of the things I hear with all the projects that we're, uh, that we're talking about today is they're, they're focused on what the, what the needs of the people are. Um, Personally, I'll never forget when I first saw my bottles pop up on a shelf in my community because people in my community went and requested that it be carried there. And so I just thought about the, the energy of what if we all did that with each other um, and just, I don't know how to describe it. This process is like, this project is so transformative. Just even, I, I go and I speak a lot to youth and just now there's 12 and 13 year olds that are run up to me with, I'm starting a cookie company or I want to start a lemonade company. Or, I want to, because they know that there's a possibility now, you know? And so when you add, when you, when you sow youth, when you show people that have never seen an opportunity or a pathway, when you show them a pathway and you show them that it's around the corner or that it's attainable or that's a Facebook message away or email away, the, 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 the mentality that it takes on the community is almost, it's, I can't even describe it. There's a sense of hope, the, the, a sense of, um, a sense of, of pride that, that you can't, tangibly described, but it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I, I love what all these projects, I think about then all those youth and families and, you know, just accessing the facility and Toby, like the sense of hope that can be restored through mental wellness and just a safe place that's accessible. I mean, you reference even its accessibility to, to DMAC and I mean, just how we really are teeing up um, and supporting this neighborhood to bring to life the visions of this neighborhood. And I think that is what is most exciting to the Community Foundation. Um, I think I mentioned at the beginning, you know, as part of our grant making process, um, we have a, a competitive process and you three know that well, uh, but it's rooted in community planning. So at the Community Foundation, we don't believe in saying, this is what we think should happen. We instead review 20 community plans and we elevate what has been already said are needed and critical, um, you know, projects in community or, or issues in community. So. When you think about the broader potential of impact um, on our uh, on our community, on our neighborhood, what might you leave with donors? What do you want donors or leaders to know about how this particular project connects to the broad community and the vision that we all have for the future? What reflection might you leave with them today? I'll jump in. Um, no, go ahead, jump in. All right. One thing we've talked about with our project is the, the future of this community is obviously the youth. And all too often today, we can pick up the paper and see youth getting undesirable activities going on and, and really leading down the wrong path. We use some crime data to show that we have two other rec centers in the city. And, and this was another idea that we had was when our buildings are open and we have positive programming filling those hours were open, the juvenile crime statistics go down to almost zero. And that proves us a point is if we can keep these kids in positive, healthy activities, their future is going to be better, which means the city's future is going to be better. We don't need as many police officers, so to speak. We'll have more kids doing positive things and great leaders. So that's one of the takeaways we used. I mean, for me, I would just say, um, and I think this is some of the things that we're kind of all focused on, but the importance of teaching people how to fish, the importance of addressing poverty at its most baseline level. Um, and teaching families and equipping families and equipping youth with the tools and assets they need to, to transition their families away from some of the situations that plague our community. Um, so that's one of the things I, I know, and I, I don't, of course, please, for all donors, please continue to give, but also give your time and give your energy and give your, um, you, you'd be surprised, a, a project like Center 6 doesn't happen if there aren't conversations with community leaders outside of my community along the way to encourage and give me advice, um, the importance of those of those conversations and answering those emails and taking that 20 minute phone call. So 
Good advice, good and good reminder, Marcus. You're right. Time, talent, and treasure um, all critical importance for communities. So that's absolutely true. Toby, I know you got something in your brain. I also think about all three of these projects and the impact that they'll generate are multi generational. And so this isn't a flash in the pan where we're the flavor of the month. Like these three projects will be here for hundreds of years and will impact thousands and thousands of central Iowans. And I think that's what makes the, the three projects so innovative. It, we didn't stop with what's the minimum we can do. And we're all doing the, the best that we can for our community. And I think it's that, can we do better? And like that mentality of all three of these projects, or we didn't stop. Um, and, and even our Six Avenue Flats, for example, we were supposed to be on the ground floor in one of the uh, work live loft units. And then Green State Credit Union came and said, hey, we want to do a financial empowerment center, but we can't find any space. So we literally moved our offices to the mezzanine and we're going to shove Green State on the ground floor because it's the right thing to do for the neighborhood and the community. And it makes the project better. Um, and I think that's what these three projects are looking at is how can we have the best impact um, and it's going to be for, for years to come. Such a good, such a good reflection. And I just want to reiterate, you know, philanthropy donors are really just one part of the equation. And if we didn't have thoughtful leadership, you know, innovative nonprofit leaders, boards, um, organizations that are willing to connect all these dots together, you know, it's hard to have funding do good work without the good people on the ground. And so, you know, again, I do just want to reiterate to the three of you and really to all the nonprofit leaders in Greater Des Moines, you know, it, it's because of the work on the ground where we're able to help make a difference. And so genuine thanks um, to the, you know, from the donors from the Better Together Fund and from the Community Foundation, we are so honored to be able to partner with projects like yours. Um, it's just really, you know, this better together mantra that we talk about is, is real. And I think these are three wonderful examples of how that's brought to life in our community. So creating a new model for mental wellness and housing, uh, building a facility by building stronger community, elevating entrepreneurs to expand collective potential. You know, those are just a couple of the phrases um, that really describe the impact of the Better Together Fund that we were able to be a part of last year. And, and these projects are, you know, underway. They're getting started. Marcus, March 14th, you said, is, is breaking. And Ben, you've had great announcements after great announcements. And Toby, you keep getting new programs in that space. I love it. It's just so energizing. Um, so thank you so much to the three of you for sharing the story, sharing the vision, and um, really helping us understand the impact beyond the project. Um, and it's, again, been such an honor to be a part of it. We can't wait to see what the future brings. Um, and thanks to all the donors who support um, projects like this and bringing them to life in our community. We are simply better together, and these are great examples of that. So with that, thank you so much to our audience for joining us today. Thanks to the three of you. Um, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.